Good morning, family and friends of Grace Lutheran Church. Welcome to our celebration of the festival of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to uh, again remind you, if you've not already downloaded your your, uh, bulletin, please stop the video, go download your bulletin so you'll be able to to keep up with all of the service. Um, Other than just sort of doing that, I really don't have any real uh, uh, other announcements for you. So we'll begin. Let us rise and sing our opening hymn. Uh, Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today, Alleluia, our triumphant holy day, Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us this day, let us, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. Alleluia. Alleluia. Let us come before God in true repentance, seeking His mercy and forgiveness. O God, our Father, we com- admit and confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we have sinned against You in thought and word and deed. Have mercy, have mercy on, on us and, and forgive us, 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 O Lord. Lord. We confess that we have not lived as your followers, but have sought to go our own ways in directions that have not brought glory to you or blessings to others. Have Have mercy mercy on us and and forgive us, us, O Lord. Lord. We confess that your love has not reached others through us in every situation, that there have been times in which we have been loveless, 
thoughtless and judgmental towards others, unwilling to help our neighbors as we ought. Have mercy on us and forgive us, Lord. We confess that Your will has not been our priority at all times and that we have not always been defenders of the weak and the helpless in our circles of family and neighbors and friends and beyond. Have mercy mercy on us us and forgive us, Lord. Lord. We confess that we have not used opportunities given to us to witness to the resurrection faith that is ours and have at times been slow to speak of the hope that is ours in Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, Lord. Upon this your confession, and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I as a called and ordained servant of Christ forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now may the God of peace Himself sanctify you completely and may your whole soul and spirit and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in His peace. Amen. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, Let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Bye.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light. Grant that we who have been raised with him may abide in his presence and rejoice in the hope of eternal glory. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Jeremiah chapter 31. At that time, declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the clans of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall adorn yourself with tambourines and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant and shall enjoy fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill country of Ephraim. Arise and let us go to Zion, to the Lord our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The epistle is from Colossians chapter 3. If then you have been raised with Christ... Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise for the hearing of the gospel. Hallelujah. Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake... For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Christ who is crucified. He is not here. He is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has raised from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Yeah. 
Savior Jesus Christ. I've always said it's hard to preach on Easter. I mean, Christmas is, is not that easy to preach on either, but Easter, Easter, there's just so much going on around the festival that finding anything new to say seems to be almost impossible. And that's really the way it ought to be anyway. For ours is not a religion of innovation, but of tradition. We value things that modernity casts aside as useless or worthless. And so when you come to a great festival of the church, like Easter, with the best hymns and music that humanity has to offer, breakfast after a sunrise service, and all of the banners, and all of the lilies, and the new dresses, and the bonnets, and the suits, and the liturgies, And those same readings, that same faith, that same story given to us anew every single 
year. It makes it hard to think of anything new. For it's not new. This is the same message we've been preaching for 2,000 years. He is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I come to this, this once and a lifetime opportunity, I hope, to perhaps preach upon the saddest Easter we can remember. Now, we may, have, we may have had worse Easter's, to tell you the truth, within our history. I mean, we have celebrated Easter in the midst of war. Some of you listening here may remember celebrating Easter in the jungles of Vietnam. Some of you may remember an Easter in the deserts of Iraq. We have Easter's in the midst of disasters. I remember as a child in Arkansas, there was a tornado had ripped through a small town on Holy Saturday. A congregation arose in the morning on Easter Sunday to, to find their, their church obliterated. We've had shootings. We've had volcanoes. We've had recessions. We've had all kinds of other assorted calamities. But in those cases, most of us were together. Not like this. Each of us separated unto his own home, unto his own house. My family, growing up, was not particularly religious. We didn't really start going to church until we were maybe, I was maybe 10 or 11. So there were Easter's that I had missed. I've missed quite a few if you count those days many of you have never many of you have never missed an Easter Sunday you've been in church worshiping our Lord every Easter for every year of your life I find it sad and I miss you I miss the hymns. I know we just sang them, but it loses something when it's not corporate. The banners are all here. Every one of them has been hung with care. You can't see them. It's not the same. And yet he is still risen. He is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Leading Leading that he is risen, by the way, is my favorite part of being a pastor. It's my favorite part. That and having Monday off. <laughs> Don't you want having Monday off? <laughs> That's good too. I find it really fascinating. For some people, for some people, this Easter is going to be just like many of the other Easter's that they've celebrated. They'll get up maybe mid-morning on Easter Sunday. They'll turn on the, the radio or the talk shows on Sunday and they'll go, hey, it's, it's Easter. Yay. And that'll be it. While we miss our time here together, we will celebrate Easter and we will celebrate Easter, by the way. We're going to. Easter is a season. It's not just the one festival day like Christmas. It's a season. It runs for days. Easter is a season. It runs for seven weeks. And the next time we come back, when we come together, we will celebrate together the festival, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I can't promise the lilies will still be alive. <laughs> but we will worship and celebrate together. In the meantime, you have to remember that our, our Easter celebration has not been canceled. You can't cancel Easter. And our festival has been delayed. We live in strange times. We are participating in voluntarily, by the way, what I hope is a world global effort. It's a health effort. I saw on TV a big church in Texas was continuing to meet. One member citing obedience unto God's law as opposed to man's law. And all I could feel for him was pity that he knows so little about God's law. God does require us to observe the Sabbath, but he also calls us 
to obey lawful government orders. This shutdown is lawful. The state has not shut down the churches because of their message. The state has not singled us out and said that that you, because of you preach Christ and Him crucified, can no longer meet anymore. We are still preaching. That message of the gospel continues to go out. It goes out on Facebook and on YouTube and over the radio. We have had services in drive-ins. There are services meeting in fields where everybody stays in their car. All gatherings are shut down. The churches are shut down. The casinos are shut down. There was no March Madness. Not that anybody would care. There's no spring football games, though, which is... There's no movies. There's no diners. There's no concerts. We have not been singled out. If we had been singled out, I grant you we'd be having a completely different conversation. But in the meantime, we are voluntarily participating in a global health strategy and it's cost us it's cost us mentally it's cost us financially it has absolutely laid waste to my diet i mean (laughs) you might as well forget about it i saw a facebook photo with a thing somebody had opened the refrigerator and there was a piece of paper taped with a note it said you are not hungry you are bored shut the refrigerator Our educational system is floundering. Our economy is tottering. I pray it does not cost us spiritually. And yet the Sabbath day is a day of rest. And it was made by man and given unto us so that we might rest. That we might honor the day of the resurrection. We choose this day of rest as the same day of worship because it honors the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every Sunday is an Easter Sunday. We can worship on any play, any time we want. We can worship on any day that we would like where two or three are gathered to hear the Word of God. True worship exists in spirit and truth to the Father. In South Carolina, churches are not even mandatorily closed. I mean, the state doesn't have an official essentials list, but we're not on the list of those who have been deemed unessential. We could probably meet if we wanted. Other states have used other words. My point is we could be open if we wanted to. We could come. I don't think the sheriff would come and storm our doors. But God's law also tells us to obey the law and realistic recommendations. But God's law also tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves. To participate in a mass gathering, any mass gathering in the midst of a pandemic, it's not only reckless, it's irresponsible, and it's dangerous, negligent, you might call it. God's law teaches us to love our neighbor. We're required to help them, as Luther says, to improve and to protect his possessions and his income. It's very easy to throw health in the bottom of that list. And so today, as we gather to to virtually hear upon God's Word, to keep the Sabbath rest, to revere God in our lives and in our homes, Since we have, by virtue of our baptism, already died, we have already been raised with Him. Therefore, as Paul tells us, let us set our hearts on things above. And now that things above is not constructed to be spatial, but it's soteriological. What is above? What is that thing above that Paul is telling us to keep our eyes upon? Is it not the ascended God? Is it not... Our glorified Lord, raised from the dead, seated at the right hand of God, set your mind on those things. Because we have already died. We have already died with Christ by virtue of our baptism. Paul says in verse 3 that our life is now hidden. 
And hidden has two connotations. Things that are hidden are secure. We have a real life Easter egg hunt going on in my house right now. My wife only buys so many Diet Cokes. And she needs two Diet Cokes a day. And there's only so many you can keep in the house. And so the children are searching for the Diet Cokes. And the wife is hiding the Diet Cokes. They are hidden. And when they remain hidden, they are secure. And in order to be secure, they must also be invisible. Our life is a lot like that. Our eternal life. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. That is, concentrate your concern upon the eternal and not the temporal. As Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4.18, fix your eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. For what is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Paul here is not encouraging a new world asceticism. He is not calling us out into the deserts. He is not calling us back into the monasteries. He has roundly condemned both of those in Colossians chapter 2. Paul is telling us that this life in this world is better. It is better if it is lived within the power that is beyond this world. It is better if it is lived within the power of that resurrected Lord. If we live within the power of that ascended God, live within the power of our glorified Lord who sits at the right hand of God and earthly things, where we eat and what we do and where we work and what we eat and we drink, these are to be avoided. They're not avoided as if they are moral or immoral. That We don't disdain them because they are the material things of this earth. But from the moment of our salvation, from the moment that we were baptized, a, Christ, a Christian has died to all of these things. We have died to the evils of the flesh. We have died to the sinful nature. We have di died to the bondage of house and home. And our life, our our real life, our eternal life, it is hidden in Christ. And it is secure. And it is invisible. And it, doesn't, it, it doesn't depend upon the trappings of our faith. It depends upon Him. For He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we possess this eternal life now. It is already our present possession because of our baptismal participation with Christ in His resurrection. This being the case on that last day, this life already present and given to us in our baptism will be manifested and you will be revealed. Though we already possess this eternal life, we have not yet fully experienced it. For now, for now it is hidden. But later it will be revealed. In this life, the Christian possession of eternal life is hidden under the shadow of suffering. It's hidden under the shadow of cross-bearing that we must endure. Sometimes when it comes to cross-bearing, Christians seem no better off and perhaps even worse better off than those who don't follow Christ. I've had every company in America over the last couple of days tell me that we're all in this together. I only wish it were true. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. He is risen and so have you. I read Colossians 3 again. Therefore, you have been raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on the things that are of earth, for you have died. And your life, your life is hidden with Christ Jesus. When Christ who is your life appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. The Lord's blessings be upon your solitude, upon our days of cross-bearing, upon our days of suffering.
The Lord bless you and keep you to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us rise. We confess the words of our, or we confess the Apostles' Creed, the words of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. That the church would live out its calling and that the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ be joyfully celebrated in all places. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. That the nations of the world find peace with justice in our time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the abiding blessings of God rest upon our families and our neighborhoods and our places of business and our schools. Let us pray to the Lord. That those whose confession of the true faith leads to bodily peril or other sufferings who know relief and deliverance from every danger, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That those whose lives know specific challenges, including all of those who are ill, those who are mourning, No heavenly benediction and strength for each day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That all whose labor adds meaning and beauty to the life of the church, the musicians, artists, craft workers, flower rangers, and others, find joy and blessing in all that they do to the glory of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. That the memory of the faithfully departed be held in reverence and honor by all as we await the time of the resurrection and the reunion at the close of the age. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. These things and all else that we should have asked on this day of holy rejoicing, grant to us, Lord, for the sake of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we'll collect our offerings. And since how you're not here, you can't really collect your offerings. However, if you'd like to uh, go to the website, make a donation, that'd be great. You can also send it to the church. Uh, that would be wonderful. Um, in the meantime, our offertory, He is a risen, glorious word. <laughs>
The peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, If Christ Had Not Been Raised From Death, it is 486. <laughs> If Christ had not been raised from death, our faith would be in vain. Our preaching but a waste of breath, our sin and guilt remain. But now the Lord is risen indeed, He rules in earth and heaven. His gospel meets a world of need. serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.